Okay, let's continue cheating. Why is this cheating? Because reading the book and watching these videos and studying doesn't involve going out and watching and we can learn what people saw year after year. You gotta watch this year after year around the globe, separate tribes, separate courts, separate whatever, you know, until they can start communicating and then sharing and then growing. So we're learning all this without doing it, but I encourage you to get outside and I'll encourage you again. What are we doing? We're looking up and wondering, well, wow, what's going on with that? We don't have cell phones, right? We don't have any of that stuff. And I'm gonna get rid of this now <clears throat> to give myself room for a nice big picture that'll tell you a lot about uh, our seasons and how humans figured this thing out, right? So this is, as I say, in, in, a human endeavor it's a human wondering and it's a human evolution of awareness uh, knowing our place in space but also being able to know when to plant and to start us try to start figuring out things that that are true that we can depend on along the way we made up lots of stories and the stories you just have to you might want to believe them and maybe it's the best you've got but at least know that well I think this is true but I don't know so five astronomical objects that we're looking at with our naked eye, what people could see around the globe, what they notice. You could see stars as dot, dots of light that are fixed. And by fixed, I don't mean they just stay right there all the time, except one, uh, Polaris, the North Star. Uh, they move, they move, okay? But they move together. So they're fixed relative to each other, right? Wherever, I, wherever my right shoulder goes, my left shoulder is fixed, hopefully. Hopefully they're fixed. Um, so that's what we mean by that. And then there would be streaks and people wondered and they were afraid and they'd say bad luck and whatever. We'll check out those later in chapter nine. We'll get into this in chapter 10 and 11. More planets. We're gonna get into that a lot. Chapter seven, eight, and nine. Uh, but those dots didn't stay fixed. It'd be like this shoulder moved over there or there and this one stayed there. So. Again, we talked about those, and people wondered if there were gods, days of the week, and so on. And now we're doing sun. It's the only one that looks like that. We didn't know back in the day, cheating, that sun is actually a star. And these are just really far away. Didn't know that. So common and understandable, and not making fun of anyone, to think of it as a god. Helios, Greek, Ra, Egyptian, Inti, Incan, Sol, it was the uh, Latin term for, for it. Sonan, you'll see Sonan, Sonan, and Sonan, and Sun. The Sun, because it was the only one, but then you go, wait a minute, that's, these are names for that thing. Just like we don't say the Jupiter, we say Jupiter or Mars, not the Mars. But this reflects the fact, that fact. I've talked about that. Let's go over that. We're going to finish this off. Now, also, we're going to do moon, and we're just going to watch moon. Now, this is going to tie into a year and calendar, the calendar that people created, and seasons. This really ties well into seasons. Moon phases were also used to track the time, and a lot of peoples around the globe early on used moon phases, they counted the moon phases, new moon cycles, and those are roughly months, very close to months. Um, and again, it was the god, lots of names for moon. And so we're gonna talk about the moon, but now we know that there are other moons. And phases. And also, with your naked eye, there are these three fuzzy patches, and I'll just underscore this real quick, that remember, they didn't know what they were. What were they? The little fuzzy clouds. They weren't star dots, they were fuzz balls, but they always stayed there. So if I have a star dot here and a fuzz ball here, it always stays there. That's weird, because clouds come and go, and they move. So what was that little fuzzy? And you could tell with your eyes, it kind of fuzzy. You're like, what is that? It wasn't known until about 100 years ago. Hubble and Einstein was involved in this too, but lots of folks and Henrietta Leavitt, she she had a discovery that was huge that allowed us to know about galaxies. Northern Hemisphere one, Southern Hemisphere you can see these two didn't know what they were, 
we're gonna get rid of all this. But really quickly, I do, I will say, if I haven't shown you, I think I might have, the Hubble, this, this is some old school, this is 1969. Now you just go on the internet and go spiral galaxy, boom. You'll see, and you go to images, you'll see it. Bar spiral, elliptical, irregular. I mean, it's so cool, right? So, I don't know, can you see this? Probably. So, a bunch of, bunch of different galaxies out there now, and that was even then. Now we've seen even better than James Webb Space Telescope. Different shapes, and you just go, I don't know. First you discover, then you see if you can figure out the whys and hows and, and such, right? So this is a little review of chapter zero. So as you move forward, always take time to, to review. <gasps> Andromeda, our closest big neighbor, maybe with about three times more stars than us, something like that, right? Coming towards us. Andromeda, can you see it? That's a spiral. Um, here's another one. There's lots of them. Okay, I like these. Pictures. And you, oh, wait a minute, what are those? That's not a fuzz. That's not a club. Those are stars, and we are in our galaxy, which is Barspar, halfway out. We're one little dot, one star. What if, how many billion? Small ones, one billion, tenth of a billion. Large ones, 100 billion, a few hundred billion, 1,000 billion, which is a trillion. And we're just one star with the stuff going around it. So we've got a context, but we don't know that. Put that away. Cheating, once again. We are looking outside. And what we're going to watch today and tie into and give ourselves some power so we know when to plant our tomatoes, and that is we are going to watch sun. Okay? Helios Ra, Inti, Sol, Sona. And which way are we going to look? Well, this is going to be important. We're going to look south to watch sun. And remember that memory aid. So we're going to build on what we've done. We, we just again review, we're going to review the idea about brightness and, you know, dimmer and brighter and distance and all that stuff. Keep that stuff fresh as you review this. But for now, we're going to do sun. And again, we don't know much, right? We, cheating, we know that if you shrank all of Earth now to a grain of sand, sun would be that big. You can get 100 Earths, 109. Earth's across the width each way. So that's cheating a little bit. Now we're gonna track sun. Okay, so we're gonna track sun. And I'm gonna do this, make sure that you can see me. Okay, we're gonna draw it like that. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit. And then I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, so can you see me? I think you can. So we're going to watch sun, we're going to track sun, we're going to keep track of it. And people back in the day did some impressive stuff. They lined things up. So you got, you got sticks and you can line things up and you can measure angles. And you can create this and kind of make wedges and make uniform wedges as many or as little as you want. But, but you can start talking about it. We're going to talk about how high sun is and where around our horizon it is. We're gonna map it. Where is it? Where does it rise? Where does it set? How high does it go during the day? I'm gonna go back over to that in just a second. Okay, so naked eyes, we're wondering. We don't know. We don't know anything about the size of sun. We don't know if the sun is a star, anything of that nature. And so let's, we're gonna come over and notice a few things. So here's our list for sun that we wanna know now. We'll talk about the layers of sun and stars and stuff in chapter 11. So here you have what we're going to do for the sun. All right. We're going to observe sun. Okay. You've got to look from the same place, because if you look at from a different place, it'll look like it's setting next to something different or rising next to something different. And even if you travel, you know, 10 miles, so you can get a different perspective on it depending on where you are and so on. So you've got to find a place. Make it cool. You're going to hang out there anyway. And a good sound system and all that stuff, right? 
Lots of names. Ra, Inti, Helios, Sol, Sonos, Observe, Son. And we wonder, you've got to look from the same place. You're going to see tiny daily changes. So, you know, every day you can. If it's cloudy, fine, well, you can fill in the gaps. But you see big monthly changes. So we don't really notice it day to day. You're going to have to, like, draw a picture and then go back out. In a week, maybe you'll pick up a change, but in a month, you'll certainly pick up big changes. And the other thing is that it repeats on a yearly cycle. And when people realize this, they clued into, hey, I can keep track of this calendar. They tied in seasons and so on. We're going to watch and track this. We're going to sketch four things. We're going to sketch where sun rises, how high it gets around. Sun rises roughly east, but not exactly. And so exactly where will change a bit each day and quite a bit each month. It's funny, we don't notice this, right? Well, we're busy. It actually makes sense. It's fine. But we can notice it, and it's cool, too. We all, it's not that hard. So why don't we tie into this and share this with each other? How high it goes at noon, roughly noon over south, you know, just to get a sense, right? How high does it go? We can measure that. It's called the altitude. That's chapter two. How high does it go? How high are any, is anything above our horizon is the altitude. Uh, but how high it goes changes a bit daily and a lot monthly. And where it sets roughly west, rising roughly east, heading over south, and setting roughly west. But exactly where is why we got to pick a place to sit and watch it, and it'll change a bit daily and a lot monthly. This is what our ancestors did to keep track. They also watched stars, like what stars are out at night. That helped them a lot, and then they watched moon cycles, and they started to chunk out time, because they didn't have, they didn't know it, they didn't have the answer, but they didn't have YouTube. Um, additionally, then, This is, of course, tricky. You can't see what stars are behind the sun because you can't see any stars. And behind implies that stars are farther away. We know they're light years away and the sun is one A away. Why we know that now, but back in the day, it was like sun was in those stars, whatever. Um, so what sun is in front of, really, changes a bit daily and a lot monthly. All this, daily changes that go unnoticed, monthly changes that you absolutely will notice if you just pause a little bit, pick one spot, and watch any of these. How do I know what's behind the sun? Well, look at what rises before sun rises. When you can see those stars, draw pictures. You gotta draw a bunch of pictures and check it out. That's how people start figuring this out. And then after sun sets, what sets after sun? And you keep figuring it out and you'll piece together a whole, whole uh, picture. And what you find is that sun appears to travel along a circle through the stars, I know you can read, repeating the circle yearly. Every year, it repeats. And you go, hey, that's kind of wild. I bet we should track that. Maybe there's something crazy and mystical about it. Who knows what? And people around the globe notice this without talking to each other. You don't have to talk to each other to notice that. Sun travels along a circle. You can call it a line through the stars. Repeats. It's called the ecliptic, chapter 2. And it goes through a strip of stars that the Greeks called the zodiac, but you can call them other things and other people did. So the zodiac is not real. That's the made up part, but it is, they do go through that strip and you can cut it up however you want. So that's what Sun does, and we're going to watch that and be able to describe that how? Again, with pictures. So let's be able to draw pictures. And I think I'll keep this one. Kind of short as a setup. So here's the pictures. Then I'm going to do a, a slideshow. And then we're going to draw this picture. And what I want to point out to you here, this is an important idea because sun does not rise directly in the east except on two days. It does not set directly in the west except on two days. On one day, it rises the farthest on the north side, 
of east. And then you'll find that it sets, sets, set, oh, excuse me, rises, 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 looking just at sunrise, rises directly east, rises, rises, rises the farthest south side of east, rises, rises, remember, it goes back and forth, then directly east, second time in a year, and goes back, a yearly cycle. Now that's true over here too. If it rises the farthest, the north side of east, It'll, go, it'll still go over south, but it's going to set the farthest, the north side of west. Remember, it's still going to be here. And keep in mind, let me remind you, that we are looking south. And so let's draw some hair. This is not your face. This is your hair, right? You're looking south. So you got eat sandwich. Oh, yeah, eat sandwich. We remember that. So on one day... It rises here, goes up real high, and goes here, and then it, again, it gradually goes back, directly west, farthest south side of west, directly west, farthest north side, back and forth on the sun setting, back and forth on the sun rising, and we'll see the height also changes. We'll draw that next time. I'll start you out with some, uh, some pictures.